all of this information that we were able to collect and identify these candidates as our top picks really makes it more difficult for us. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what all of you have identified. Mm -hmm. Calling the Honolulu Police Commission meeting back to order. It is now 3.50 p.m. and we are here at the station with quorum established. At this time, we want to ask for any closing remarks. Um, I did want to notify everyone that we have contacted candidate Logan and informed him of his selection as the next chief of police. If I go back 20 years when I left the department, the police department was a revered organization here in Hawaii and on the mainland. If you mentioned you were from Honolulu Police Department, people enjoyed that. They, they looked and respected the Honolulu Police Department. I, I'm not so sure today with some things that have happened with the recent police chiefs, but we need to get that back. Um, the National Co uh, Community Survey that I mentioned on Thursday night said that only 45% think the police are doing a good job. That's not legitimacy. So we need to get that back well above 50%. I want it at 80, 90, or 100%, uh, and I will work towards that. Right. My, my follow-on to that would be, so you're kind of inside-outside, yes. right? You were inside for a period of time, and then you were outside for a period of time. Um, you have demonstrated uh, executive, level, executive level leadership. Um, what's more important for you when, should you be selected, would be how you develop your command staff. You got some thoughts on that. How would you go about doing that from the get-go? So I have a command philosophy on how I lead, and I expect everybody whatever position they're in to lead from that position they sit in. So my conversation with my number one and, or two and three is to have a conversation on my expectations. And then to do that with the assistant chiefs, and the majors and captains on how I expect people to behave, what I expect for their divisions to, ha um, to be able to accomplish, and how their um, respect and integrity is throughout the department. So it's a conversation for all of us to have at the command staff, and I'll have it one-on-one -on -one, um, so that I can talk to each one and find out what they want to do in their future. Do they want to stay? Do they want to leave or, or retire? And so that's a conversation I need to have, but I need to make sure that we're on the same sheet of music on how I lead and how my expectations for them to lead. Mr. Logan, you know, I, there's, so, there's a lot of things I like to about him, and we have been through and talked about many of them, but one of the things I really admire is <coughs> He talked a lot, particularly Saturday, the other day, about uh, his wellness, wellness for his troops, and I really appreciate that. But he not only brought it, he talked about the troops, he talked about the families surrounding them and the importance thereof. He also is very uh, dedicated to, I think, goal and object, objective setting and, and sticking to those goals. So to me, the, the idea that that somebody who has a background in the state would be potentially becoming someone who's in the city, I, I think that's good. I, I, think that, I mean, I, I think law enforcement in the state gets along anyway, but I think, I think having those bridges is so important. I'm, I'm humbled and honored. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, it's been a, I won't say a wonderful experience, but a challenging <laughs> experience. I've learned more about, or some things about myself I didn't know. First and foremost, we want to talk about his management philosophy, leadership philosophy from my standpoint with respect to internal operations, morale, recruiting clearly. There's a real need to do that, as I think I just answered on a phone call, um, community relations, communications with media, uh, and just his overall belief systems as to how he looks at the current state of the police department and what he hopes to get done on his watch. Those, and I, you know, he's now been asked to take over this job. And I think, um, you know, I don't try to micromanage. I'm not going to tell him what to do, but I'm really anxious to hear um, what he has to say and how he wants to approach the job.